Lord, lead us from lies to truth, from death to life, and from darkness to light. Samuel said, speak, your servant is listening. And Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Epiphany is a show and tell, divine show and tell. Bible give, gives us numerous examples of this. When people experience darkness and gloom, God intervenes in their context, in their midst, and do a new thing. In Samuel we read, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. Then God called the young boy Samuel to be a prophet to the people of Israel. In the gospel, we read about the encounter Jesus had with Nathaniel, who became one of Jesus' disciples and came to be known as Bartholomew. And today, on the eve of Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we will also discuss the vision that led him to the civil rights movement. We see a new beginning with the young boy Samuel as the old priest Eli failed to see or hear anything from God. It was not because God abandoned Eli, but because Eli couldn't find the courage, the will, and moral fortitude to carry out what God desired for Israel. Though he was a good priest, his children, who were supposed to become the new priest after him, were unfit for priesthood. And Eli lacked self-awareness to chart the course for the future of Israel. God saw the need and God intervened. He made his presence known to the young boy Samuel, whose sight and hearing remained uncompromised by the political interest and the imaginations of the elders. In a vision, he was called to become the prophet in Israel. In Galilee, Jesus met with Philip, who brought Nathanael to Jesus, but Nathanael was skeptical and prejudicial against Jesus. He snidely commented, can anything good come out of Nazareth? However, either Jesus ignored his snide remarks or he wasn't offended by that slight. Instead, Jesus saw in Nathanael an Israelite in whom there is no guile, which caused Philip to have an epiphany and led him to make the great confession, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. He realized the divinity of Jesus. And Jesus promised him that he had seen anything yet. He is going to see more things as he follows Jesus. In Samuel and Nathaniel, we see how God called people to God's mission, and how do we experience God's call today? Epiphany transforms people and moves them to action, move them to get engaged in the world. On the eve of this uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, let us also learn about a modern day vision and epiphany. Many of you know the incident of uh, Rosa Parks sitting in the front of the bus. After her refusal to move, 
to, from the front to the back. There was a big bus boycott in Alabama. And the leader of the bus boycott was a 27-year-old minister of a Baptist church nearby by name Martin Luther King Jr. He was receiving ongoing death threats against him and his family. One late night in January of 1965, 1956, he was woken up by a telephone call which threatened him that if he didn't move out of town, in three days, they were going to blow up his house and blow out his brain. At that point, he reached that point where he could not go any longer. Shaken by this threatening call, he sat at the table in his kitchen and started praying. He described this experience in his 1958 book, Stride Toward Freedom. He said, I was ready to give up. With my cup of coffee sitting untouched before me, I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing cowardly. In this state of exhaustion, when my courage had all but gone, I decided to take my problem to God. With my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed aloud. The words I spoke to God that midnight was still vivid. Lord, I am here taking a stand for what I believe is right. But now I am afraid. The people are looking to me for leadership. And if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I am at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I have come to the point where I can face it alone. At that moment, he said, I experienced the presence of the divine as I had never experienced God before. It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying to him, stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and God will be at your side forever. Almost at once my fears began to go, my uncertainty disappeared, and I was ready to face anything. Friends, our calls to serve God may not be as vivid as that of Samuel in a dream, or as face-to-face -face and friendly as that of Nathaniel, or as challenging or dangerous as that of Martin Luther King Jr. Our call today may be is, is not to be like Eli, the priest, letting God bypass as because of our unwillingness to stand for truth, our wanting to be politically correct, as not to say uh, things as they are, or as not to speak truth to power. Our call may also be not prejudicial or derisive like Nathaniel's about Jesus and the people whom Jesus liked. Martin E. Marty, a church historian, wrote in his column, Sightings, about a giant convention of the Southern Protestant clergy in 1861. He said that almost to a person, these clergymen came across as moral, devout, pastoral, learned, informed, caring, and generous preachers. And almost to a person, they defended human slavery, claiming that it was response to divine mandates and divine will 
biblically authorized. Is the church today, instead of acting on God's behalf in the world, is it getting in the way of God in doing God's new thing like Eli the priest? The danger for us is to see ourselves as friendly and decent people like Nathaniel with no guile or deceit. And by and large, we may be. We attend church regularly, read the Bible often, participate in church activities, serve on committees and commissions, and contribute handsomely to the running of the church. With all that, we could still be close-minded and prejudicial and derisive like Nathaniel, who said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Today, we could sit easily, sit back and, and say in judgment, ask the clergy of that giant convention in 1861, how could they have been so blind and not to stand for justice and freedom? How could they have enriched themselves from slavery? Now imagine ourselves for being so, uh, you know, imagine ourselves, our children and grandchildren asking uh, or pointing fingers at us for being so close-minded about our treatment of others the oppressed people and the occupied people in the world. Folks, among people who stormed the Capitol building three years ago were Christians. They carried the banner of the Holy Bible and they had the blessing of white fundamentalist pastors. White supremacy had its origin in our white churches. It is in the light of this past we should hear our Christian call. We can be transformed like Nathaniel. Let go of our prejudices, follow our call, and join the force of light. Let me close with this quote by L. R. Nost. Do not be dismayed by the world's brokenness. All things break, and all things can be mended. Not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go, love intentionally, extravagantly, and unconditionally. The broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. Amen.